And then he makes his main point in verse 26. He says, therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. You see, Paul has a goal in his life, and every other part of his life goes and curves to support that one central goal. Paul is not running aimlessly. He has a direction. Paul is not like a boxer just fighting the air. He has a purpose. And the direction and the purpose of Paul's life is to introduce as many people as possible to the saving love of God in this world. Every decision, every action was going to be centered around that goal. And so we, as we reflect on all this, realize that we have an immense opportunity to use our freedom to have an immense impact on the kingdom of God in this world. But it will not happen if we live life in the grandstand. No, Paul wants us to get in the race, to be in training on our own. The scripture encourages us to get in the game, to train for it, and shape our lives around this central goal. Paul does not want spectators of faith. Paul wants participants of faith. And so part of what we do, you're doing already. Part of this training is you showing up on Sunday mornings and saying, I need this. I need worship. I need to study the Bible. I need to be around a community of believers that encourage me. All that is the type of training that Paul's talking about. But I want to just lift up what else in your lives would encourage you in your training. If that's your goal, and if all decisions then are filtered through your one goal of sharing God's love, what, el- what other things in your training would be helpful to your goal? What would support the work that you're already doing? That might be the question to contemplate and reflect on this week.